So if you've been subscribed to me for a while, firstly, God bless your patience. If you've been subscribed to me for a while, or you know me in any capacity in real life, you will probably know at least two things that define me as a person. Firstly, I'm transgender. And secondly, I've been deeply embedded in a Harry Potter fandom for the vast majority of my formative years. So this month has been... fun. I'm not going to talk about the author's statement as a whole, firstly just because I don't want to. I read it once, I didn't feel good, I don't want to do it again. Um, and also because plenty of people have gone through and discussed her points and debunked them a lot better than I ever could. And so I'm going to put a link down in the description if you just want to like watch people dunk on her for a while, which I completely understand if you do. Instead, I'm going to zero in on one part in particular. In fact, I'm really going to focus on one sentence of the whole statement. The author makes the claim that autistic girls are hugely overrepresented in the number of people going to gender identity clinics. Now, this isn't a lone incident. The fact that a lot of trans people are autistic has been mentioned a lot in transphobic platforms. For example, Mumsnet, The Daily Mail, and, um, transgendertrend.com. I don't think I really need to point out why that one's problematic. People seem very interested in the link between autism and gender dysphoria. Like, very interested. So I wanted to investigate. Firstly, is this true? Like, is there a link between being trans and having autism? What are the statistics on this? I'm also going to look at how this claim is used rhetorically. Why did the author mention it? What does it support in her overall argument? And why is this fact so beloved by anti-trans people? How are the lives of autistic people being materially affected by this rhetoric? Then I'm going to look at reasons for this link, like if there really does exist some sort of relationship between being trans and being autistic, why? Like, what's going on there? Finally, we'll talk about what we actually need to take from this and how we can support the trans and autistic people in our lives. So buckle up and get ready for some transphobia, some ableism, some sociology, and some intro to statistics. It's gonna be fun, I swear. <laughs> I hate to say it, but a children's author and transphobic internet forums are not reliable sources, so we have to see if there actually is a link between being trans and having autism that's been proven by, like, scientists and peer-reviewed journals and stuff. So is there any proof that autism is more common amongst trans people than cis people? It actually seems to be yes. There have been various studies researching a possible link between gender dysphoria and autism. Dr. Mark Stokes, for example, once spoke at an autism conference in Edinburgh and claimed that he had found a significantly higher level of gender dysphoria amongst autistic people than non-autistic people. A study was conducted in Holland amongst the trans population that found that approximately 7.8% of the trans people in the study had autism. To put that into perspective, about 1.8% of all men and boys in England have been diagnosed with autism and only 0.2% of girls and women. Don't worry, we'll talk about that gender difference a little later. Spectrum magazine have an article on this phenomenon. I really recommend it. It's very interesting. It's been talked about by The Atlantic, Huffington Post, Forbes, and just anecdotally, this does seem to be true. A lot of the trans people I know have autism. In fact, the very first openly trans person I ever met had autism, and I learned a lot about being trans and autism from them. So amongst the autistic population, there seems to be a lot of trans people, and amongst the trans population, a lot of them seem to have autism. So yeah, there does seem to be a link. So what? <laughs> When transphobic people bring up the link between gender dysphoria and autism, they usually just kind of mention it. Like I already said, in the author's statement, it's only one sentence. She doesn't really talk about what it implies or how it supports her argument, she just kind of throws it out there. The link between autism and being trans just kind of being mentioned with no discussion of what it implies or confirms or how it supports her overall argument is because the author wants us to jump to the same conclusions she has without actually having to mention the logical leap she took to get there. Because spoiler alert, it's kind of bad. If you're a bigot and you see the phrase, a lot of transgender people have autism, you'll think, well, this is proof that trans people are just mentally ill and crazy because autistic people are mentally ill and crazy and they're all just degenerates and the world would be better off without them. Now, of course, the author isn't a bigot. Those mums on mums net aren't bigots. All of those people in the British press aren't bigots. They're concerned. Now, if you're concerned, 
you will look at a possible link between trans people and autism and think, oh no, for autistic people, they're being manipulated, they're slightly naive, they're being forced into transition by the powerful trans lobby. Now the irony is that both the bigoted and concerned takes are just both terrible. First of all, they're bananas ableist. They imply that autistic people are childish, they're naive, they can't be trusted with their own bodily autonomy, and that non-autistic people are more qualified to make decisions about an autistic person's life than that person themselves. They're also transphobic. Firstly, when the author talks about autistic girls, what she means is people who were assigned female at birth and now identify otherwise. And misgendering aside, it paints a lot of trans people as this manipulative, powerful group that are preying on young people and trying to manipulate them into transitioning in order to gain well, we haven't quite worked out what we're trying to gain here, but I'm sure it's something evil. It's important to note that autistic people are not being forced into transition. In fact, having autism can make transition a lot harder. Receiving medical care for gender dysphoria needs a lot of talking to strangers, opening up about your inner feelings, connecting with people, and having autism can make this a lot harder. Being diagnosed with autism can make it a lot harder for trans people to receive medical care due to ableism and transphobia in the medical field. An autistic trans man named Caden Clark was denied hormone replacement therapy until his autism was cured. It's important to note that Caden Clark was killed by police after a neighbour called in a wellness check on him. Almost half of those killed by police have a disability, and in this important and long overdue conversation about police brutality and race, we have to consider how disability will factor into this. That's not really relevant to my overall point, but I really wanted to mention that. I want to highlight that even before transgender people were part of the conversation, autism has always been a gendered phenomenon. Asperger thought that women and girls couldn't be autistic and that it was purely a male phenomenon. He was a terrible person for a lot of other reasons and so I don't really want to listen to anything he has to say, but the fact is that his legacy continues today and he has informed most of our understanding of autism. The majority of early writing on autism is based on the way it manifested in boys and men and it does seem to manifest differently depending on your gender. The official NHS web website says that autism can sometimes be different in girls and boys. For example, autistic girls may be quieter, may hide their feelings, and may appear to cope better with social situations. This means autism can be harder to spot in girls. As mentioned earlier in this video, boys and men are diagnosed with autism at a much higher rate than girls and women, because the entire blueprint of what we understand autism to be was based on the experiences of boys and men. There's been this conceptualization of autism as the extreme male brain. Basically, the theory goes that autistic people are a lot more likely to have masculine traits such as logic and reasoning and have less feminine traits like empathy or emotional knowledge. This goes hand in hand with the theory that autism is caused by increased levels of testosterone in the womb and that basically autistic people are just like men extra. So maybe if you're assigned female at birth and you're autistic, you feel more masculine and are more likely to identify as trans than a non-autistic girl? but I'm not convinced. The extreme male brain theory has been critiqued thoroughly. To start with, there's actually no proof that autistic people are worse at empathizing than non-autistic people. One other critique is that it completely ignores social reasons that women might be more empathetic than men, instead taking a biologically essentialist view. Fraser argues it's possible that these effects are driven less by innate biological differences and more by cues from their parents and siblings about what it means to be a man or a woman. The theory and the studies supporting it are viewing autistic people's feelings and abilities in a vacuum whereas they have to be taken in context of that person's life and experiences. Now, I'm a sociologist and I haven't taken biology since I was 13 and fainted in front of my entire class, so maybe I'm biased, but I feel like science always has to take society and context into account before making any strong essentialist claims. Also, I'm trans, so I'm used to spitting in the face of biology anyway. Also, the traits of logic and empathy are kind of arbitrarily gendered anyway. There's no reason to see empathy as feminine and logic as masculine. They just come from our Western, modern, societal views of gender. If autistic people were more logical and less empathetic, which once again there's no proof of, that wouldn't make them more masculine, it would just make them 
more logical and less empathetic. All of this to say that autism has a history of being gendered, and this further complicates how we understand the way transgender people fit into this model. Do trans people exhibit autism the way that's expected of their gender assigned at birth, or their gender identity now? It's interesting, and complicated, and I wish we could ask these questions without the conversation being co-opted by transphobes and ableists who want to just argue that we shouldn't have rights. <laughs> I've already mentioned that I'm a sociology student and so it probably comes as no surprise to anybody that I'm just terrible at maths. Some sociology uses quantitative data, but I've managed to expertly avoid it my entire time at university. Except for that one course that will haunt me. That being said, if I know anything about statistics, I know this. Correlation does not equal causation. The most famous example of this is the graph that looks at murder rates over a year and also the sale of ice cream. Does this mean that ice cream causes murder? Or that murder rates cause people to go and buy more ice cream? No, there's a third factor that affects both. In this case, hot weather. There's significant evidence that homicide rates go up in the warm months and also, when it's hot outside, people buy more ice cream. Just because two numbers affect each other similarly doesn't mean that one necessarily causes the other. Just because being trans and having autism seem to go together in some sort of way doesn't mean that being trans causes you to be autistic or that being autistic causes you to be trans. There's tons of third factors that could affect both. So, okay, we're not talking about autistic people and trans people. We're talking about people who have been diagnosed with autism and people who are openly identifying as trans and seeking medical transition. These are very different things. So what are some of these possible third factors that make you more likely to be diagnosed with autism and more likely to live openly as trans? Firstly, a lot of trans people are diagnosed with autism during the transition process. Going to a gender identity clinic involves getting psychological and mental health assessments. It involves talking to a professional about your feelings and your day-to-day -day life experiences. And so if you have undiagnosed autism, going to a gender identity clinic greatly increases your chances of having it diagnosed. Other possible third factors include being comfortable going to doctors, having access to the internet, being able to do significant self-reflection, and all of these things make you more likely both to identify as trans and also to be diagnosed with autism. Having a somewhat supportive family can also greatly increase your chances of both being diagnosed with autism and having access to a gender identity clinic. This is an example of a time when some parents had experience advocating for their child due to her autism and therefore were more likely to to support her when she came out as trans. So those are just some third factors that could affect both being trans and having autism. Another possible explanation for this link is that sometimes what looks like autism can actually be undiagnosed gender dysphoria in children. For example, struggling to socialize as a child, feeling uncomfortable in your clothes or your body, not making eye contact, preferring to spend your time alone on your computer, all of these things can be seen as signs of autism, but could also be symptoms of untreated gender dysphoria. Sometimes it's hard to parse out whether a feeling is coming from autism or gender dysphoria, and so a lot of people are diagnosed with both. Another possible explanation is that autistic kids are less tuned in to societal expectations and norms, and so if an autistic child feels gender deviant feelings, they may be more likely to express them, while a non-autistic child will hide or repress them because they know that they're wrong or bad. If an autistic child is not tuned in as to what the expectations for their gender is, they will be less likely to adopt them early in life and more likely to express gender deviant behaviour. It's possible that the frequency of gender dysphoria among children with autism is equal to that of children without autism. However, children without autism will suppress the desire to act in a gender non-conforming way because of society's gender expectations, whereas children with autism either don't recognise these expectations or don't care. I find myself agreeing with this. Honestly, I feel like the rate of autism is the same amongst trans and cis people, but there's various third factors and diagnostic criteria that make you a lot more likely to be diagnosed with autism if you're trans. So where do we go from here? What can we learn from this? And how do we support the trans autistic people in our lives? I found two articles detailing ways to support transgender autistic kids, and they have some pretty interesting suggestions. For example, asking closed multiple choice questions instead of open-ended ones when you're discussing gender dysphoria, or providing an individual trans mentor for an autistic child to talk to, as opposed to throwing them into a huge trans support group where they may feel uncomfortable. But I'm looking at this list of ways to support autistic 
autistic trans kids, and honestly, it's just things you should do for every child. For example, this article recommends listening to them and giving them all options for school uniform. A child shouldn't be diagnosed with autism before they're allowed to have bodily autonomy, choose their own clothes, or be listened to by members of authority. Also, like a lot of autism discussion, these articles are just talking about children. This is part of a larger pattern of autistic people being infantilized and this being used to deny autistic adults their agency. This is where the author starts to imply that she knows what's better for autistic kids because they're young, naive, easily manipulated, etc. Ultimately, I feel like the best way to help autistic trans people is just to help fight to destigmatize both being trans and having autism. The fact that a lot of trans people are autistic is only scary if you already believe that one or both of those things is bad. Nobody's writing think pieces about why so many trans people have dyed hair or watched Steven Universe or have tattoos, except for me because I wrote my undergraduate dissertation on the tattoo thing. Autism is seen as this big scary thing, and so transphobes harness this stigma and ableism and use it to stoke the fear surrounding transgender children. If we keep fighting for the rights of both trans people and autistic people, then neither of them can be used in bigoted rhetoric. And we should give everybody bodily autonomy, autism diagnosis or not. Thank you.